high on the highest mountain In the forest, in the desert You can see God Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh And welcome to the series of Aqeedah This is the belief in the oneness of Allah And the last episode I was talking about the, um, the uh, major signs of the, of the final hour And today I'm going to talk um, about a stage just before um, that, uh, that day. As we know, according to the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, anyone who dies, his resurrection has already started. The day of resurrection has already started. So let me talk to you about the um, significance of this point. Um, our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, foretold us what will happen to the believer when he dies or at the point of death, as well as the hypocrite. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, said, when the believer is at, at the point of departing this world, the angel of death will come down and his, his aides with him, his aides numerous or innumerable. He would come to that person, that is the angel of death, and would start communicating with the soil, with the soul of that believer. Come out, you good soul. Come to meet your Rabb who is pleased with you. Come to the fragrance of the heavenly garden. Then, the angel of death will extract the soul of the believer and he would place it where the shroud which he brought from the heavenly garden. And those angels around him would not leave that soul in the hand of the angel of death for a, for a second. Then they'll take it, one by one, all the way until they ascend to the lowest heaven. And they would seek permission for the gates of the lowest heaven to open. The gates will be open. And the angels there would say, would call that soul with the most beautiful names that that person in whose body it was, used to be called. And all the angels would ask Allah, O oh Allah, let this soul pass by us. Why? Because that soul would emit, would emit fragrance so beautiful, so sweet, like, like nothing else. Eventually, they will go from one heaven. They will ascend with the soul from one heaven to the other. The second, the third. Likewise, every a group of angels that are in that, in that heaven, they would ask the same thing, that this soul pass by them, until it reaches the seventh heaven. Thereupon, Allah would say, send my, the soul of my slave back, because from the earth, I created them from it. In it. I'll take them back, and from it, finally, on the day of resurrection, I'll take it up. All the souls, that is, all the human bodies. Then, they will take that soul back to the grave. Now, wait a minute. This takes maybe a split of a second. Allah knows best. It's not a matter of that taking long distance. So, uh, eventually, they will um, put that soul back in the body of the believer. In the meantime, two angels. Now the job of the angel of death and his aides is finished. When his soul join, joins his body in the grave, there, there are two angels. They are called the angels of the grave. And they would come to that man after his soul joins his body. They will talk to him harshly. He's a believer, and yet they talk to him harshly. Say, who's your rub? Um, what's your faith? And who's that man who came to you? These are the three questions that we ask Allah that we can answer. 
it's very easy for everybody to say, my Rabb is Allah, my faith is Islam, and my prophet is Muhammad. May Allah exalt his mention. But you think so? Some people find it very difficult to say, la ilaha illallah. It's very difficult for them. The one who is preoccupied all the time with things, mundane things, he would not be able to say it. It will be very difficult. And the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, said, whoever whose last words in this world, la ilaha illallah, will be admitted into Jannah. However, after he answers successfully the three questions, his grave will be enlarged and an opening for the believer, an opening um, uh, to hell, to the fire. And he will be told by those angels, you see, this is your place in hellfire. Allah replaced it with a place in Jannah. That will be closed. A new window will be open um, to the Jannah or the heavenly garden. And he will enjoy the breeze, the, the beautiful fragrance that's coming out. And he would say, oh Allah, let the final hour be established. He wants to go to his place in, in, in Jannah. However, when the hypocrite, the hypocrite is about to leave this world, the angel of death would come down with shroud from hellfire, with shroud from hellfire, and the um, uh, that stinks. And he would start coaxing or communicating with the soul in order to come out. And he would say, "Come out to uh, your Rub who is angry with you." And of course, in that case, you don't imagine that the soul coming out easily. The Prophet ﷺ said, the soul of the hypocrite will be sticking to his nerves and every part of his body. He said, just like um, a wet yarn, a wet yarn stuck in a thorny branches. How this yarn could be taken out, thread by thread. And you can imagine the pain that is associated with taking out that soul from the body of a hypocrite. However, finally, the angel of death will take that. Um, the angel of death will take that soul and put it in that in that shroud from hellfire, and his aides would not leave it in his hand for a split of a second. And they will take it up the first heaven, and they will seek permission for the gates of the first heaven to be open, but permission will not be granted. Then, Allah commands that this soul be thrown back, and. They'll, it, that soul will be thrown back to join the body of that hypocrite in the grave. Well, then the two angels of, of, of the grave would ask him, uh, who's your Rabb? And that hypocrite would say, um, um, I heard people saying something and I repeated it. And uh, say they ask him also, uh, what's your faith? He would say, well, I heard people saying something. And I repeated it. Who is that man? Who is that man who came to you? Likewise, he would say, well, I heard people saying something, I repeated it. Then Allah would say, he's a liar. Give him bedding from hellfire. Bedding from hellfire. And he will be given a club. And he will go down in the earth as a result of the weight of that club. 70 yards down the earth. Then he will come back, and they will give him another blow, and that blow will turn him to soil. See how, well, we cannot really imagine how, how hard, how severe that blow will be. However, Allah brings him back when he, when the soil eventually, and he's brought back, and uh, an opening to the Jannah or to the heavenly garden, they say, this is your place in heavenly garden, but because of what you used to do, Allah has deprived you of that place. And now a new window will be open into hellfire. What do you expect a man like this to do? Of course, would say, oh Allah, let not the final hour be, uh, take, take place. Why? Of course, he knows what he's going to end up in. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, said, whoever who will enjoy his life in the grave his life afterwards will be much better. And whoever suffers in the grave, his life will be more miserable 
in the, here, in, in the hereafter. That is to say, in the, in, in, in the end, on the day of resurrection. Well, this is a point, actually, for us to remember. Unless and until one of us is really practicing la ilaha illallah, living it, uh, living it up. So, um, in other words, meeting all the requirements of la ilaha illallah, I would not be able to say la ilaha illallah at the point of death. And beware, the torture of the grave is very severe. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention, used to say, Oh Allah, in every salah, at the end of every salah, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you against the torment of the grave. Therefore, we ask Allah Taala to make it easy for us to utter the word. That's the good word as Allah described. This is the testimony of faith. La ilaha illallah at the point of death. Keep that in mind. Inshallah, next episode, will be related to this topic. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.